This is a quick tips and tricks video on setting up thin internal walls for a CFD simulation. In this video, I'm just going to look at the topology in the CAD model. Then I'm going to do two more videos on importing the mesh into CFX and Fluent to finalize setting up the thin wall internally. So here I've got a quick example. It's a simple duct with a baffle plate. And if I zoom in on this baffle plate, you can see it's got a little bit of thickness to it. It's just made of, like I say, some thin sheet metal. And what we don't want to do is apply lots of mesh across this little gap. And the, the thickness itself doesn't interfere with the uh, fluid domain and the fluid flow. Uh, it's the holes that are really what we want to capture. So if I um, go ahead and convert this into a fluid domain, so this is obviously our solid ducting, and I turn on the fluid domain and turn off the ducting. This is what we're left with, with our fluid domain. And as you can see, we have that uh, thin gap there um, um, with these little holes where the baffle plate is uh, for fluid to pass through. So if we take a look at the measure, this is a slice through it being meshed. And like I say, you can see we've got high mesh uh, count, high node count through this thin gap. And we've got some highly skewed elements um, resolving that, that thin sheet metal. So what we actually want to do is close that off. So what we've done here is I've taken away those, um, I've taken away that gap and if I just hide one of these bodies, uh, I've imprinted these surfaces onto one face. And the key thing in um, in setting this up is that they, uh, the, the two volumes need to touch and it's this interface here where we're actually going to specify a, a wall boundary condition. Now typically interfaces when we import the mesh, if they're conformal, uh, will be an interface within either CFX or Fluent and we're just going to convert that into a wall. But the key thing for the topology in the CAD is to set this up. Um, so they're touching. One thing I want to show that's really important is um, that uh, we set this what's called merge topology. So here if I click on the um, higher end of this structure and we come to share topology you'll notice it's set to merge. For those of you familiar with Design Modeler that's basically the same as using multi-body parts. So if I hide one body off here you can see I've got these holes imprinted onto this face here. If I hide the other body and go around here you'll notice that those same um, circular imprints are not made on this face. But by using the merge topology option um, will ensure that they actually get uh, uh, those faces are shared and like I say that's the equivalent of the multi-body part in design modeler. So again we'll go and take a look at this in the mesher. Um, I've already meshed it up and you can see there's a nice interface there and uh, we've got a one-to-one -one, um, node connection and if I take a look at the geometry I just simply hide one of the bodies uh, and we can see that the uh, circles are imprinted on that face and if I do the same thing, if I show all bodies and uh, hide the other one, and you'll see again, circles are imprinted. So that's the merged topology in uh, in space claim does that. Now we've got this mesh. Uh, the next stage would ju just be to import it into to Fluent and CFX. And like I said before, the default for these one-to-one -one connections between bodies is to uh, just apply an interface and it allows Fluent to pass through. We can then convert that into an internal wall for this baffle plate. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at a couple of other examples. So here are two other quick examples. This is a, a pipe in pipe type simulation or an injector pipe going into a larger chamber. We have our outer pipe and then we have this inner injector pipe that would uh, be, be uh, injecting fluid into the main domain. Um, so if we took a look at the fluid domain here, um, we'll turn it on and turn the others off. You can see we've got this uh, kind of topology single volume. And if we take a quick look at the section through there, um, find this axis over here. There we go. Uh, you can see we've got this thin end here, and again, that would uh, require some mesh resolution. Um, so instead of that setup, um, we would actually change the topology to uh, have two volumes, and it's the interface between the volumes, uh, like here. Uh, we've got this in inner volume, which represents the inside of the uh, injector pipe, and the outer volume for the uh, chamber that it's injecting into, and it's this uh, cylindrical. Um, interface here that we would convert into an internal wall uh, in our simulation. And one final example um, would be uh, a, a simple duct with a turning vane. Um, so here we can see we've got uh, a single solid volume and we've got this turning vane. In this case I haven't shown the outer ducting, I've just gone straight to the fluid domain um, and we've got this single turning vane to help fluid get around the corner of this duct. Uh, instead of doing that we would close this gap off and we would have the following topology um, where we've got these separate blocks here 
um, we've got four blocks. Uh, this interface would allow fluid to pass through uh, and then this curved interface is where we would apply our wall. So at the end of the day, basically for creating internal walls within CFD simulations, we need uh, volumes to connect at surfaces and it's that surface um, in the CAD topology that we would then go ahead and apply uh, a wall type boundary condition to in the preprocessor.